Up these stairs to the roof, quickly, before we're seen. Stop, Stop right, right there. there. Oh no, it's a security guard. Aunt Rahab, it's soldiers. I'm Miss Jean. Join me on a trip to Discovery Mountain, where the air is clear, clear enough to hear your imagination, and where every day is an exercise in faith. Join me for today's expedition in Discovery Mountain. Yay! Last week's episode ended with lots of questions. Would Janet and Harold learn to be friends? Why did Mrs. Lee wonder if God was trying to tell her something? And can Chaplain Jake really prove that the story of the Battle of Jericho is true? We'll discover some answers in today's episode called Guide. Let's join Mrs. Lee as she drives to Discovery Mountain Academy and exercise our faith as God guides Peabody, Janet, and the others with every step. Take it slow, Amanda. Oh, oh, oh goodness. Amanda, you almost slid into me. Reader should sprinkle some more salt out here. It's icy. Well, ice isn't the problem. My car is. I need new snow tires. You better get some soon. I thought I'd be getting them next week as an early Christmas present to myself. But? But yesterday I got an email from Sunrise Home. The orphanage in India? Yes. They desperately need a new well and asked me to join them in praying for one. What does that have to do with new snow tires? It will cost $336 to dig a new well. And? Natasha, I have exactly $336 saved for new snow tires. Oh, and you don't think their email was a coincidence? No. I think God is telling me to give my $336 to Sunrise Home. Reminds me of Reader's Worship a few months back. About the Bible verse that says pure religion is caring for orphans and widows? Yes. James 127. But if I pay for the well, I won't have money for snow tires. Amanda, if God is asking you to help Sunrise Home, then you'll have to believe he'll keep you safe. Even with my old tires? Well, Psalm 121 says the God who watches over you won't let your foot slip. So he can keep your tires from slipping too. Mrs. Lee. Janet, you're here early. I wanted to show you those cards we talked about. Oh, I'd love to see them. Let's go inside. Janet, these are beautiful. I had no idea you were such an artist. My dad taught me how to upload photos of my paintings and turn them into note cards. He can do anything on a computer. Ah, that's where you get your computer skills. I plan to sell the cards to our neighbors, but dad said it's against the rules. Now I don't know how I'll ever get enough money to buy school supplies for the kids at the orphanage I came from. Well, I'll buy some. And I'd like to tell the class about your special project, too. No! No? I don't want them to know. When the kids at my old school found out I came from an orphanage, they teased me every day. Oh, but your classmates here aren't like that. In fact, my class helps support... They're just the same here. They're not like you. Well, we'll talk more later. But please think about it, okay? <sighs> okay. I don't know why I agreed to go back to Mountain Meadows with you. That HOA guy didn't want us there, and we got a parking ticket. I'm certain God wants me to try again. <sighs> I just hope we don't get tossed out by a security guard. Careful across this bridge. And... This time, we park outside and use the pedestrian gate. Well, I saw a dumpster near the office. I'll throw away yesterday's muffin wrappers while I'm thinking about it. There's the trash bin. I'll open it for you. Hey, didn't you read the sign? Oh no, it's Steve, the homeowners association guy. The sign clearly states CCNR rule number 32. 
Garbage bins are for the use of residents only. We didn't see the sign, but we're just throwing away a couple of muffin wrappers. Are you residents of Mountain Meadows? No. Then you've broken rule number 32. The fine is $25. <sighs> I'll get my wallet. And don't even think about handing out your flyers. Soliciting is a $150 fine. But I told you, we're not asking for money. It doesn't matter. No political, religious, or financial soliciting is allowed. I knew it was a bad idea to come back here. Mabel, it's never a bad idea to obey God. I just have to figure out how I'm supposed to do it. Hello, everyone. Jacob P. Donovan, your favorite chaplain and archaeologist at your service. Are you ready to visit Jericho? Did Joshua's spies make it to Jericho? Well, Harold, let's get into our Bibles and find out. Solomon, our father's stories were true. Look at the walls of Jericho. They really do go up to heaven. Courage, Enosh. Even if we manage to get past the guards, where do we go once we're inside? The Lord will guide. Didn't he say he would be with us every step of the way? Now, let's try to blend into that group of merchants over there. Aunt Rahab, you've been at the window since dawn. Come, have a cool drink and relax. Relax? With Israel camped on our border? Grandfather says they won't dare attack. <laughs> if my father is so certain, Talia, why is he hiding behind the barred door of his house? Um, I don't know. The truth is, my father and everyone else in Jericho are terrified. But why? No army can take down the walls of Jericho. We can easily survive a siege because we have enough grain to last us more than a year. And springs that never run dry. So why is everyone afraid of Israel? Because they have something we don't. Jehovah, a God like no other. How do you know this? My grandmother told me stories of a God who dried up the Red Sea and saved Israel from the Egyptian army. What? Dried up the Red Sea? How? I, I'll, I'll tell you later. There are strangers at the gate. Jericho is swarming with strangers. These are different. You there. What business do you have in Jericho? Us? Uh... Like so many others, we seek the safety of Jericho's walls. What village are you from? <laughs> Gentlemen, you look like you could use a bite to eat. My inn is just down the street. The finest food in Jericho. But... Don't worry, guard. I shall provide some for you as well. A thank you for sending these fine travelers my way. But... I shall send my servant with a basket of honey cakes. Honey cakes? Salmon, should we trust this woman? Probably not. But I trust God, who certainly must have sent her to rescue us from that suspicious guard. Here we are, gentlemen. The inn of your servant, Rahab. Up these stairs to the roof, quickly, before we're seen. What's going on? I know who you are. I told you we shouldn't trust her. Lie down so I can cover you with these bundles of flax. Don't make a sound. Don't even breathe until I come back. Aunt Rahab, why'd you take those men to the roof? Shh! Did anyone else see? No. Say nothing to anyone, Talia, and we may just survive this. Aunt Rahab, you're scaring me. Who are those men? They're... they're Israelites. Israelites? You're committing treason. You think I don't know that? The guards will kill us if they find those men. Why are you betraying your city? Because my city is already doomed. There's no saving us. The God of Israel will deliver us into their hands. Well, Grandfather says that their God has abandoned them. That's why they've been wandering around in that wilderness for 40 years. If their God abandoned them, how have they survived out there? 
You believe those fantastic rumors of water produced from rocks and bread from the sky? You think their god has kept them fed and watered? I think their god is unlike any god of Jericho. I think I would like to know more about this god. Aunt Rahab! I, I'm sure it's just travelers seeking refuge. Open up! Open up in the name of the king of Jericho. Open up in the name of the king? Those aren't travelers at the door. Those are soldiers. Do they know about the hidden spies? What will happen to Rahab and Talia if they get caught? We'll be back after this short break. Hey, Mountaineers. Producer Steve here. There are all kinds of new things waiting for you in the Discovery Mountain Club this month new videos, and new episodes of podcasts like Jake's Take. And two new bedtime Bible stories are in the club too. And check for details on the latest club giveaways. We'll see you in the clubhouse at discoverymountainclub.com. Chaplain Jake, you can't stop there. I can't? No, tell us more. What happened with the soldiers? Did Rahab and Talia get arrested? Uh, Harold... You said you already know the whole story, so... Well, I might have forgotten some details. Well, are you sure you're really interested? I mean, even though it's not a Christmas story? I guess it's not so bad after all. All right, then. Where were we? Oh, yeah, the soldiers. Open up! Aunt Rahab, it's soldiers! I said open up. Why, gentlemen, what a pleasure to find such handsome soldiers at my door. Handsome? Come in, come in. Talia, fetch some cool drinks. Yes, of course. <clears throat> we have no time for this. We know two Israelite spies enter the city. Spies? A witness says they came here. Why, yes, there, there were two men. So you admit to treason? But I had no idea they were spies. They were Israelites? Yes, a guard at the north gate alerted us of his suspicions. You know, they did seem awfully nervous. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get them to spend the night. Isn't that right, Talia? Um, yes, that's right. They wouldn't stay. You ladies are fortunate. They might have killed you. You must find them before they harm anyone. Which way do they go? Toward the east gate. They haven't been gone long. If you hurry, I know you can catch them. Oh, I promise you we will. Oh, I can't believe that worked. Do you think they'll come back when they can't find the spies? We can't take that risk. What are we going to do? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing right now. That would raise the suspicions of our guests. They're already uneasy because of the soldiers. So we fill their cups, and when their nerves are soothed, I'll slip away to see to our other visitors. Salmon, do you think those soldiers will come back? I don't know, Enosh. I only know we must keep trusting God who led us to this house. Shh, S someone's coming. Do not be alarmed. It's your servant, Rahab. I can't believe you didn't turn us over to those soldiers. You risked your life. Why did you do it? Your people and ours are enemies. I know the Lord your God has given you this land. The people are melting in fear because of you. Because of us? And because of your God, the God. We heard how your God dried up the Red Sea when you left Egypt and how he helped you defeat the Amorite kings east of the Jordan, and our hearts sank. If the people of Jericho live in terror of us, then God be praised. He's already giving this city into our hands. Now, because I have shown kindness to you, show kindness to me and all my family. We will show mercy to you and your family because we owe you our lives. Give me a sign you will remember me. Take the red linen cord from your waist and hang it out your window. When the army of Israel attacks the city, 
If that red cord is still there, all who are in your home will be saved. Thank you. Now, grab that rope. I will let you down the side of the wall. Go towards the hills and wait three days. Three days? By then, the guards will have stopped searching for you, and you can safely return to your camp. Hurry, before the soldiers decide to come back. Those spies were so brave. The spies? Think how brave Rahab was. Chaplain Jake? Uh, Yes, Janet? It's a really good story. I told you, it is one of the most amazing stories in the Bible. But how can you prove it's true? No, excellent question. All right, everyone, Uh, we only have a few minutes left, but I'm going to present you with two amazing pieces of evidence. Well, what are they? First, the spies said the walls of Jericho went up to heaven, remember? Yes, but they were just exaggerating, right? Well, Jericho was built on a small hill, and archaeologists have discovered the city had a virtually indestructible double wall. Double wall? Yeah, one inside the other with a dirt slope in between. So the Israelite spies looked up at a hill with a dirt ramp all the way around, and then a 15-foot stone retaining wall. That's tall, but not tall enough to reach up to heaven. But there's more. On top of the 15-foot retaining wall was a brick wall six feet thick and 20 feet tall. That's 35 feet high. And we're not done yet. An embankment sloped up the inner wall, and that was also 20 feet tall. So it really did look like the walls reached up to heaven. All right, so archaeologists proved that Jericho had huge walls. What's the second piece of evidence? Uh, Here, take this and read Joshua 2.15. Then she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the outer side of the city wall, and she resided within the wall itself. I remember that part, but how could you live inside a wall? Oh, archaeologists know how. They discovered that some people built their houses right up against the walls. The city wall literally became the back wall of their houses. Why? Well, it was cheaper to build because one wall was already there. And not only that, the city walls were six feet thick, but they weren't solid brick. They weren't? No. There were hollow spaces in between the supports, and people would actually break into those spaces and use them as extra rooms. That proves the Bible is right when it says Rahab's house was on and inside the wall. Thank you, Chaplain Jake. Class, if you haven't turned in your baby pictures yet, please bring them to my desk before you go. Mrs. Lee? Yes, Janet? I'd like to do something a little different. See, I have a picture of our dog Ruby when she was a puppy. Isn't she adorable? Aw, she certainly is. What kind of dog is she? She's a long-haired dachshund. I've never seen a long-haired dachshund before. She's beautiful. We all love Ruby so much. I want to make an ornament with her picture on it. Janet, the ornament should have your baby picture, not Ruby's. But Ruby's sort of our baby. Just bring your own picture tomorrow. We'll be starting on our ornaments right after our spelling test. All right. We're starting the ornaments tomorrow. When Janet got home, she went straight to the backyard. She did her best thinking when she was playing with Ruby, and she had a lot to think about. The Christmas ornament she didn't want to make, how she could earn money for her orphanage project if she couldn't sell her note cards, and most important, was the story of Jericho really true? Gracie believed it, and Chaplain Jake's evidence made sense, but... Want to know a secret, Ruby? I kind of hope the story is true. Part of me wishes I could be like Gracie. Part of me thinks it would be nice to believe in God. Maybe then I wouldn't be scared of so many things. Janet, time for dinner. Okay, Ruby, one last throw. It's too dark to see where the ball went. Oops, I think that one might have gone over the wall. Sorry, Ruby. Okay, time to come in. 
It's freezing outside. Dad, have you ever read the story of Jericho in the Bible? Jericho? Remember, Steve, I mentioned Janet's taking a Bible class at her new school. Oh, that's right. Complete waste of time, if you ask me. It can't hurt to learn stories that reinforce good values, like honesty and treating others the way you'd like to be treated. They should stick to things that are real, things we can prove, like science and math. Chaplain Jake says there's evidence the story of Jericho is true. So I was wondering if other stuff in the Bible was true, too. What evidence? Like, archaeologists discovered Jericho had really big walls. So big, Rahab's house really could have been inside. Sorry, I gotta take this. It's the security guy. Hello? What? A prowler? Did you just say prowler? A prowler? In Mountain Meadows? It's a good thing they have a security guard. We'll find out more about the Prowler after this short break. Hi, producer Steve here. Would you like to hear what's coming up each week in Discovery Mountain and the Discovery Mountain Club? Sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. Visit discoverymountain.com slash newsletter. Steve, is there really a Prowler? Well, a resident reported a suspicious man wandering down her street. How did he get in? Isn't the gate locked at night? Of course it is. Or at least it's supposed to be. Daddy, will he try to break into our house? Janet, sweetie, we'll be fine. The door is locked and the alarm system is turned on. I'm scared. Honey, I know how scared you get. It's why we moved here. So we could live behind the big wall and have cameras and security guards. What about the Prowler? Don't worry about him. I'm going to help the security guard track him down. Is that really necessary? As president of the Homeowners Association, I owe it to the residents to find out how this guy got in. And as Janet's dad, I'll do anything to help her feel safe. Daddy, be careful. I will. Be sure to lock the door behind me. Mom? Yes? I wish I didn't get scared so easily. Me too. But I understand why you do. Really? Your life was very insecure when you were little, when you were in the orphanage. So now you crave security and safety. I always feel safe with you and Dad. We love you and do our best to protect you. Dad thought living in Mountain Meadows would help, but... I guess even the best security system can't always make someone feel secure. I've been thinking about Chaplain Jake's story. The story of Jericho? Yes. Gracie said something about the spies. The first ones, not the ones that Rahab helped. What about them? She said if God was on their side, then they shouldn't have been afraid. Do you think God helps people not be afraid? I don't know much about God, Janet, but... I'd like to think it's true. Me too. I want to be more like Gracie. I don't like being so shy and scared of everything. Maybe we should invite her over sometime. Maybe. I don't actually know her that well. And why might that be? Maybe I haven't tried as hard as I could. But most of the kids don't like me. I just know it, especially Harold. Well, how about dinner? I don't want to invite Harold for dinner. (laughs) No, I meant why don't we go ahead and eat our dinner now? Oh, I was still thinking about Harold and how rude he is. Let's eat before our food gets cold and you can stop thinking about Harold. Harold, time for dinner. But dad's not home yet. I know, but the food's ready, and I'm not sure when he'll be here. Where did he go? I'm not sure about that either. He said he had something important to do, but he was kind of vague about it. Can't we wait for him? I think we should go ahead and eat before the food gets cold. Okay. So, Janet and Harold are both having dinner without their dads. Steve Beckman went to help track down the suspicious man, and Pastor Peabody went... 
Well, I don't know where Pastor Peabody went, and neither does his family. You don't suppose? No, Pastor Peabody couldn't be the suspicious man, could he? <sighs> well, God, I'm here in Mountain Meadows because you keep telling me to come back. I've been praying for each house as I walk by because it's the only thing I can think to do. If there's something more you want me to do, Lord, feel free to tell me. It's pretty cold out here. I feel kind of foolish. At, at least this time I haven't got any fines for breaking homeowners association rules. Security! Stop right there! Oh no, it's a security guard. Now what have I done wrong? Uh, good evening, officer. Is there a problem? We got a report of a suspicious man wandering around. Well, I haven't seen anyone suspicious. Hold on. You don't mean me, do you? I need to ask for some identification. Certainly. Whatever I can do to... Wait. Deputy Bo? Is that you? Pastor Peabody? What, what are, are you, you doing, doing here? here? No, does Deputy Bo think Pastor Peabody is a prowler? I don't know, but I couldn't imagine Peabody being a prowler. <laughs> Me neither. Is Pastor Peabody worried he might be in trouble? Or does he know that as long as God is on his side, he doesn't need to be afraid? Isn't there a verse that talks about that? Oh, yeah, there is. Let me find it here. Oh, it's Joshua 1 verse 9. It says, God, your God, is with you every step you take. Hmm, just like the spies in Jericho, Pastor Peabody will have to exercise his faith and remember that God will guide him every step he takes, even on a dark, cold street in Mountain Meadows. Janet hasn't practiced exercising her faith, but it sounds like she wants to learn how. Mm-hmm. Something inside her is whispering that God can help her overcome her fears. What about you, our listeners? Are you scared sometimes? You can memorize Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9 this week. And whenever you feel afraid, you can exercise your faith and remember that God is always with you. And remember, we'll see you again here next time. I'm Miss Jean, and you've been listening to Discovery Mountain. To listen to other episodes and to send us a message, visit us at discoverymountain.com or write to us at Discovery Mountain, P.O. Box 999, Loveland, Colorado, 80539. And in Canada, write to Box 2127, Oshawa, Ontario, L1H7V4. This has been a production of The Voice of Prophecy. Join us again next time here at Discovery Mountain. Every Step was written by Janice Nelson, produced by Steve Phillips, and post-produced in Ontario, Canada by Douglas Bruce and Danny Columbi. Recorded in Loveland, Colorado at The Voice of Prophecy Studios and in California and Ontario. 